Hi, my name is Matthew Casserly, and I work here at Yandex in the International Sales Department. Welcome to our lecture titled, Bidding and Other Changes in Yandex Direct. As of mid-April, the bid setting interface in Yandex Direct changed, and new metrics appeared in your statistics. They were big changes, but nothing to be frightened of. Today, we will introduce you to all the new features, talk about what technologies are working under the hood in search advertising, and how you can now purchase ads on search. We will discuss what exactly has changed in the bidding interface, what SERP layouts are, what is important to pay attention to when setting bids and working with the budget forecast, new metrics in your statistics, how to ensure that your ads are displayed in all possible SERP layouts, and what strategies you can use to resolve different issues. So why would you need to change things when everything works? You've probably heard about something new in Yandex Direct called SERP layouts. What this means is that the design of the search results page may vary depending on both the user and the ad. Yandex Direct analyzes the ad and the specific user and decides which SERP layout will be most effective in each case. By that, I mean which SERP layout will provide the best balance between user happiness and the performance of the ad itself. SERP layouts refers to the design of the search results page, but also refers to the technology that determines which form the search results page takes in each specific case. Let's take a look at some examples. When this user entered the search query, buy a scooter, there are some things that we can assume. For example, we can assume that they have not yet decided on an exact model. We can show them different options so that they can compare their characteristics. When this user entered the search query, scooter shop, we can guess that they want to know the locations of scooter shops. They are not so interested in looking at product details online. They most likely want to visit a store and view scooters in person. In this case, it is fitting to show them a map marked with store locations. Meanwhile, this user has entered a search query for a specific brand, Oxello, and store, a chain of sporting goods stores called Decathlon. They have almost determined what they want to buy and where they will buy it. So Yandex Direct can show them a specific store and where it is located. So what we have are different ways that search results can appear depending on the user's search query. As we've already seen, even related queries, as we had with the scooters, can show different results. Let's look at some of the SERP layouts currently available. One SERP layout already in use is expanded formats. Remember that you can add descriptions for your site links when editing your ads. One SERP layout that we are currently testing includes a map showing locations of the advertiser's branches or office. Another layout places ads in the middle of the organic search results. And yet another displays information cards with actual product prices. The natural question at this point would be how you manage all this variety in the bidding interface. We have lots of different SERP layouts with different positions that don't match up to the old premium placement and guaranteed placement. Let's take a look at how we reflect this long list of potential SERP layouts in the interface. The main change we have made is to move away from positions and instead focus on the traffic volume. The numbers you see here are points of reference in the auction, which roughly correspond to the old positions. Advertisers looking for a way to understand the new scheme can use these approximate matches for different places on search. However, it is much wiser to look directly at the available traffic volumes, because the same position on search can yield different traffic volumes. Traffic volume refers to the relative increase in the available target traffic an ad will receive. In other words, the click-through rate of an ad placement. It is measured in conventional units. This is not a percentage value, as there are traffic volumes of 106 and 111, which would be an ad like in the previous example with site links descriptions. However, in general, it turns out that a value of 100 is the traffic volume that an ad has when it is in the top position in our most popular and basic SERP layout, which is premium placement. From there on, the traffic volume decreases from top to bottom. 
Let's look at the main questions that advertisers usually ask. Question 1. Before I knew that I was paying for a specific position, but now what am I paying for? If you previously set bids to make it to first premium placement, two things could happen. First, you might not have been making it to first premium placement in the end, depending on your competitors' bids. Second, even though you might have made it to first premium placement, you might not have been getting as many impressions as you expected. In the new system, your position may vary, but you can be certain that your ad will get the traffic volume you paid for. Question 2. How can I estimate how much clicks will cost, and how many clicks will my ad get? The answer is that nothing has changed here. We still recommend you to focus on the bid that you consider acceptable. The budget forecast will continue to work as it did before, giving you the approximate number of impressions and clicks. Question 3. Why has premium traffic become so expensive? First, there are new options in the interface, like 106 and 111, that previously did not exist. Second, occupying an entire ad block and completely displacing all competitors is expensive. Moreover, this is not always possible, depending on the search query. Keep in mind, however, that setting bids for the 75 or 100 traffic volumes are sufficient for your ad to make it above the search results. When managing bids, we recommend that you keep an eye on your statistics. The average display position allows you to see where an ad was most frequently served. It's also useful to look at the average CPC, search queries, as well as reports and conversion data from Yandex Metrica. Other new indicators have appeared, such as average traffic volume, weighted impressions, and weighted CTR, but we'll discuss them a little later. Now let's talk about the changes to bidding and the logic behind SERP layouts. In the budget forecast, you will now see the traffic volume, and it will give you a forecast for the number of impressions and clicks. Keep in mind that this is an approximate forecast, as it is not based on your real ads, but on other advertisers' statistics in Yandex Direct. Why is it very important to focus on your campaign and your statistics? This is partially because an ad's relevance in relation to a search query depends on both the bid and the traffic volume you can receive. For example, an advertiser chooses keywords related to selling Ford Focuses, but their ads offer a completely different car, let's say a Kia Rio. The ad text in this case will not be fully relevant to the search query. Of course, you can do this and get an additional audience due to queries of a similar category. But you can also expect a lower CTR here and higher bids because you are competing with more relevant ads. Let's return to traffic volume. When we use a value of 100, we mean that this represents the maximum number of clicks that an ad can receive in the most popular SERP layout, first place premium placement. We don't mean 100 clicks necessarily, as the maximum number of clicks varies in different categories. The user above is looking for a scooter. If this search takes place in summer, we can expect that there will be hundreds of thousands of possible clicks since scooters are in season. Yet if you are selling something either rare or exotic, or in an off-season period, you won't have as many users searching for it, and hence far fewer clicks. Therefore, keep in mind, the value of 100 is not the number of clicks, but the maximum amount of traffic in a certain category in first place premium placement. Now that we have figured out what 100 is, a traffic volume of 85 corresponds to second place premium placement. While a traffic volume of 75 is third position, we can clearly see that traffic decreases the lower you go. This is important if we have the same SERP layout. Within one single SERP layout, the average relationship between these positions maintains the same. Here's something important to remember. When the design of the SERP layout or number of competitors changes, we can end up with a different traffic volume for the same display position. Let's say our ad appears in expanded format. In first position, we will see a different picture as the traffic volume has now reached 110. In this instance, you can clearly see why 110 is more expensive than the price for 100. 
it requires us to displace all the competitors from the block. We don't mean simply outbidding them and appearing next to them, but forcing them out entirely. Therefore, the increase in price between 100 and 110 is significant, and in principle is not available for all search queries. The next topic for us to look at is the auction system used in Yandex Direct. Nothing has in fact changed in the auction. The same VCG auction continues to operate. The only changes are related to bidding and some visual changes in the interface. Let's have a look. Let's recall what the VCG auction is and how it differs from the GSP or second price auction, which was used up until 2015. In the second price auction, we have traffic depending on bids, looking like this. Here on the vertical y-axis, we have the traffic volume that the advertiser receives. And on the horizontal x-axis, we see the bid that they have set. The higher the bid, the more traffic the advertiser receives. The advertiser sets a bid with a value of B1, and in the second price auction, the click price is determined by the bid of the nearest competitor, B2. This green area is all the money which the advertiser has paid for this traffic volume. So how does the VCG auction differ? Each step corresponds to an additional traffic volume. Visually, it is clear that the area of the graph, the money that the advertiser pays for the traffic volume, is less since the advertiser pays a higher bid in order to get to the next step. The lower steps pay the previous price. How do we calculate how much an advertiser pays for one click? We need to divide the area by the traffic volume. In the second price auction, the advertiser buys all traffic at one price. In the VCG auction, each step is calculated separately. Each horizontal stripe corresponds to an additional traffic volume. Each item in this fraction corresponds to the next step up. This graph is not only different for each advertiser, but also for each user. So we should average these graphs to show you the traffic volume in the interface. That means the steps will be slightly smoother and rounder. This is a simplified image, excluding CTR. In fact, the traffic volume is influenced by many factors which we have already mentioned. In the end, despite the complicated formula and the smoothed out graph, the essence has not changed. Here are the key advantages of the auction system. In VCG auctions, the cost per click increases according to growth in traffic. The advertiser pays more only for additional clicks. Due to this, advertisers benefit from getting more traffic. Advertisers can get the right traffic at the best price if they know their revenue from a click and set the same value as a bid. Please note that the auction itself has not changed. Now let's look at what has changed in the interface. You have already noticed that you now see traffic volume instead of display positions. CTR is now shown for 28 calendar days. Direct Commander and the Yandex Direct API now show a traffic volume scale. Let's see what has changed in statistics. You may have already noticed that Report Wizard opens by default when you go to your statistics. This is the most detailed interface for getting statistics. CTR, just like in Report Wizard, is now shown for 28 calendar days. Please note that this combines all statistics together. Nothing has changed inside. Now let's move on to the next indicators in our statistics. The average purchased traffic volume is the amount of traffic you are already buying. If the value is less than 100, it means that you are not purchasing all available traffic for the keywords in your campaign. If you need additional audience coverage, you can do this. If you see that you ha already have reached 100 or are higher, then you already have purchased the maximum number of clicks for these keywords. If you need even more traffic, then you need to look for new keywords or consider new ad formats. The weighted impressions metric is in a sense similar to the average display position, but these are impressions normalized according to the effectiveness of the position they appeared in. We look at the number of impressions and at the weighted impressions. The closer these two values are, 
the more the ad appeared in the most visible positions. For example, there were five impressions, and if the traffic volume values are averaged out, then the value we get is slightly less, 4.35. That means that the ad was served in quite a high position, but there is still room for improvement. Weighted CTR is the click-through rate normalized for the display position. So how do we apply weighted CTR? By using this formula, we can compare two ads CTR. There's one more indicator that we've had for a while, which we shouldn't forget about, average display position. As it was before, you can still see at any moment in which position, on average, your ad was served. When calculating the average position, impressions and clicks in ad blocks on the first page of Yandex search results are taken into account. For example, the value of 2.7 means that the ad was more likely to appear in second or third place premium placement. It's time for an important question. Can I see which SERP layouts and ad extensions users clicked on in my campaign statistics? As for SERP layouts, no, you cannot see which SERP layouts users clicked on. You can see, however, which ad extensions were clicked on. To do this, you need to go to Report Wizard and click Click Position. Now let's move on to part four, managing ad campaigns. First of all, you should add all additional ad extensions in the interface. How do you ensure that your ad ends up in all possible SERP layouts? By adding site links with descriptions, a display link, address and telephone number, callouts, a second ad title, and images in two formats. We see that many advertisers are moving away from using click-through rate as a KPI and instead evaluating their campaign's results. This is a correct move. Let's take two hypothetical advertisers as an example. First, we have John. John wants to surf ads at the highest positions in search results at any price. So John sets excessively high bids, regularly pays attention to his results, and is constantly keeping track of his competition. Our second example is Peter. He optimizes metrics that take into account ad effectiveness from a business point of view. He focuses on statistics, not on bidding. Peter evaluates his campaign's effectiveness by looking at their ROI. Peter's approach appears much more effective than John's. If you want to check a campaign's performance to help you determine the right bids, the first thing to do is check the number of conversions. This is most easily done in Yandex Metrica. Of course, this will be easiest for advertisers with clear goals set for their site. Like adding goods to the cart on their site, you can also set a completed order as a goal in the Yandex Metrica interface. Where does conversion information come from? There are three sources Yandex Metrica, your CRM system if you have one, or if no data is available, you need to make a test budget. How do you calculate a bid properly? The first place to look is your conversion data. Let's say that we know the total number of sessions or visits and we can see that 110 of them involved conversions where an order was placed. We also need to calculate your conversion rate. Next, we do the following. We divide the revenue by the conversion rate, which was multiplied by 100. This gives us a bid to set based on our data. Of course, this bid has been calculated in a simple manner for a very small ad campaign. If you have different areas of business and different search queries, it is better to calculate everything separately. There are plenty of bid calculators, different formulas, and calculation methods available online. They all vary depending on the return on investment. Every advertiser is faced with the issue of evaluating traffic quality. It's best when Yandex Metrica is available with goals configured, but even without them, Yandex Metrica can analyze user behavior on a site and predict the likelihood of a conversion when the user clicks on your ad, Yandex Metrica analyzes the user session, and uses machine learning algorithms to predict the likelihood of conversions on the site. How does this happen? 
Well, we have data about goals in Yandex Metrica from different sites, and we have a conversion classifier through accumulated statistics. Based on this data, Yandex Metrica uses machine learning to predict the probability of goals being fulfilled. It works well for sites that have clear goals, like items added to baskets, application forms filled out, and so on. Next, this information is displayed in Report Wizard as the three engaged sessions indicators. What are these indicators? Let's look at them. Engaged sessions are the cumulative estimate of conversions of sessions from Yandex Direct. Cost per engaged session is the average cost of conversion, the expenditure divided by the engaged sessions. The engaged session rate is the effectiveness of conversions. The engaged sessions divided by clicks, multiplied by 100. Let's look at an example where we compare the engaged sessions indicators for desktop and mobile. Using Report Wizard, we were able to determine that there is less traffic from mobile devices, but the traffic that comes is cheaper and has higher conversion rates. Our recommendation to set up Yandex Metrica is for all advertisers without exception. You can link it to your Yandex Direct ad campaign, set up goals and view results based on different attribution models. Links to more information about each of these points are available in the description below this video. So let's sum up what's important for advertising on search. Our main recommendation is that you add all possible extensions to your ads. This guarantees that your ads can be displayed in all possible SERP layouts. And don't forget the number of SERP layouts is increasing. Second, make sure you take your current performance into account when managing your bids. Take advantage of the statistics you have and let them influence your decisions when setting your bids. And of course, set up Yandex Metrica to gather and have access to all your site statistics. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us for this lecture.